Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and today we're going to be taking a look at Serato Sample. Now Serato as a company is mostly known for their DJ software. Pretty much every DJ I know uses Serato and I've been using it personally for like 14 years. It's the best. And I think part of the reason why it is the best and most popular DJ software out there is because it has the best time stretching algorithm in the world built into it. It's called pitch and time. Now as a DJ, you wanna be able to play a song at any tempo you like without changing the pitch and vice versa. You wanna be able to change the pitch of a song without changing the tempo. This is really hard to do without making the song sound like trash, but somehow pitch and time does an unbelievable job. Okay, that's all well and good for the DJs, but I'm a producer. I wanna use that technology too. Well, you can buy Serato pitch and time separately, but it's $400 US and it only works in Logic and Pro Tools. So if you have unlimited money, be my guest. Serato Sample, however, has the pitch and time algorithm built into it. You can use it on Windows and Mac. It's a VSTI, so you can use it with Ableton or any other DAW that you like. And on top of that, it's a great sampler with a really fast, really creative workflow. Oh, Slink, it must be really expensive, huh? Nope. It's only 79 bucks US. Actually, it's even cheaper than that when you use my Slink Sample discount code, which gives you 25% off. Look at that. Thanks Serato for sponsoring this video. Let's check it out. All right, so here we are in Ableton and I've just got a little bit of a drum beat that I've made here at 90 BPM. Pretty funky, let's drag in a Serato sample. Now right away, it's asking us to drag an audio file in. And I've been playing with Serato sample for a little bit here and I've been really enjoying making those sort of like MPC, lo-fi hip hop cut up beats sort of tracks you know so let's drag in a 70s love song 70s or 80s i forget this is anita baker sweet love it's a classic And uh, oh, look at that right away. It's detected the key of the song and we can actually change the key of the song with these arrow keys. So we're actually changing the key independently of the tempo. The tempo section is over here and we can unsync the tempo from our global tempo and pick whatever we want. Check this out. <laughs> That's wild. So you can play it at 1 BPM or 999 BPM. Pretty crazy. Let's turn the sync back on. We also got these buttons here where we can double or half the speed of the song, which is kind of handy. <laughs> We'll keep it on 90 BPM. So what's the deal with all these buttons down here? Well, we can assign these buttons as different start positions for our playhead, kind of like a cue point when you're DJing. Um, Serato DJ users will be very used to this system. So let's find a spot where we want to have our first cue point. We'll call them cue points. Let's, let's put a cue point in there. I'll just zoom in so we can get it bang. And by the way, I love these colored waveforms. So I'm just gonna click this A key here, or I can use my keyboard, or I can just touch a pad on my push here. And now we have a cue point ready. Let's put another one in actually. Let's see where we want it. We'll put it here. Cool. Now the cool thing about these cue points is that we can actually adjust the key shift and the time stretch independently of our global. So let's say we want this cue point to be seven semitones higher than the other one. It's that easy. And we can time stretch it to like half the speed. Pretty neat. Let's just put it back how it was. We can also have the sample play backwards from that position. Which is very creative indeed. We also have our little parameters here. We can have a filter. Oh, 
And that's again, independent of the other cue points. And there's also attack and release timings. So we can have it sort of fade in and fade out, which is really cool. So up here in the top left, we've got monophonic mode and polyphonic mode that does pretty much exactly what you would expect. And these two modes here, this one's kind of like a gated mode and this one's more like a legato mode. So in the gated mode that we have selected now, I've got to hold down the key to keep that note playing, or I have to send to write a sample, a legato MIDI note. And as soon as that MIDI note is over or it ends, then the sample stops. Whereas this mode here, you just push it once and it'll just continue playing. And since we're in monophonic mode, we can just play the next sample and it'll kind of trigger and overlap. Just like that. But in gated mode, it sort of sounds like this. By the way, did you notice I just added that cue point on the fly? Pretty neat. Now, depending on which cue point we have selected, right now we've got this one selected. We can click this button here and that will spread that cue point across every note on the keyboard and we can play it at different pitches like this. And this is pretty fun in polyphonic mode because we can kind of play chords, yeah? <laughs> pretty interesting if you're into that. All right, but that's all too much work. It's gonna take ages to get a bunch of cool samples happening here. So this is the brilliance of Serato sample. Just click this button, find samples, and it automatically picks a bunch of cool samples for you to use. So I've just gone ahead and added like an OTT, a little glue compressor and a little side chain, and we'll play this beat and we'll just jam along and see if we can come up with something kind of fun. Let's, let's try it out. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty cool. Let's use the Ableton capture button here and see what we got. Yeah, so we just got a MIDI clip here with a few MIDI key taps. We can quantize this now. And maybe now I'm not happy with this key. I wanna write it in say C minor. Or let's write it in E minor. Or let's change it up a little bit and we'll set it to gated mode and we'll edit this MIDI information. So I'm gonna select it all and hit the legato button. And we can kind of uh, start adjusting this MIDI information a little bit. just loop that up and there we go <laughs> we got a little idea started all right so let's try a different song here let's try this one this is side effect i can't play and we'll just click find samples and let's listen to the song for a little bit actually all right <laughs> I'm just going to hit the beat and I'll jam something out here. I don't know what key points I have, but we'll find out if anything works. Thank you. 
Hey, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I maybe was a little bit uh, slow on my timings there, but I just clicked MIDI capture button and I've got the MIDI clip that we just recorded here. I'll just quantize this again really quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool i'll take this piece and put that there and then these two were kind of the same so i'll put that one there and then, then we have like an alternating pattern yeah cool that sounds pretty cool so we can like continue writing a song here and just uh grab an equalizer and take some of the bass out we can grab a bass line here's one i prepared earlier and then we can maybe just jam a bass line out Etc. Etc. I mean, this is really fun. We've been only working on this song for a couple of minutes and it's already uh, coming together. It's really satisfying to just break out a Serato sample, click the find samples button and just start jamming. All right. So there's a couple more features that I should let you guys know about. For one, you can actually drag an endpoint for every sample that you like. And that way, when you're in sort of legato mode, I'm just a it will actually stop at the endpoint rather than just continuing on forever. But if you have the endpoint all the way up against the start point, it'll just continue forever. Sometimes when I'm using Serato Sample, I find a really cool spot where I want to put a cue point, but all my cue points are already set. Let's say I want a cue point right there. And I know that I only really want to keep, you know, the, the ones that I have the stars on, which I don't have any stars on any of them at the moment. But what you can actually do is you can hold down the shift button and just delete a sample and then just click it. And now we have, you know, this D sample here. You, you, you. I'm, I'm, I'm just a so that's really handy and, and great for workflow. After you've clicked find samples, it might spark some ideas and then you can kind of fill in your own samples. Now there's also a few other options in this dropdown box. We also have set slicer, set random and key shift pad. Now set random, instead of detecting samples and trying to look at transients and stuff like that, which is what find samples does, set random just throws a bunch of random samples randomly around, which can be cool as well, can really spark some ideas. I think it tries to like, put the samples on transients so you're not just like you know somewhere oddly in the middle of the song it tries to keep the samples on beat which is great because you can just immediately start jamming now set slicer is a very different mode and what that does is it will put a bunch of one beat or two beat whatever you set consecutive cue points in and they all have a start and end point and this is really fun to jam with too check it out I mean, the possibilities are endless with this slicer mode and you can, like I said, you can change the length of the slice. We can push all the slices over to a different chunk of the song. <laughs> it's a really powerful feature. I really like it. And it gives you that kind of NPC feel. And then the other option here is key shift pad. And that basically does a similar thing to what this button does, except it's kind of permanent. You know, it puts all the cue points in and shifts them. So if we just click that, I just made this cue point here. Maybe I'll set a length to it. Skip. And then we'll just hit key shift pad and there we go. So I guess the only other features I haven't explained yet is this little button here that just kind of freezes the window so that when you're playing samples, your view doesn't jump around. And then this velocity button, if you turn that on, then your cue points are actually velocity sensitive. 
Cool. So that's Serato sample. What an amazing piece of software. I love the colored waveforms coming from Serato DJ Pro. I always dreamt of having colored waveforms like Serato in Ableton. And now you sort of do. It's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about Serato sample is right now you can't resize or rescale the window. But I spoke to the Serato team. They said they might be implementing that feature into Serato sample in the near future, but we'll see. I absolutely love that find samples button. It's so amazing. You just drag a song in any song it could be like electronic or you know an old 70s song you drag it in you hit that find samples button and then just immediately start jamming everything's in key everything's on time it just works it's so easy i feel like i could write a whole lo-fi hip-hop album in a week with this shit. so if you want to check it out there'll be a link in the description thanks for watching peace